State of Missouri Cosmetology Practical Exam 2017. Um, first, I'm going to go through what your setup's going to look like. They changed the setup slightly to client one and client two. So when you first start your practical exam, the very first thing that you want to do when they tell you to start setup is to grab your hand, sanitar hand sanitation first out of the kit and your disinfectant spray. You'll disinfect your hands first, get a paper towel, spray your table off, and disinfect your area. You should already have your three bags out, one soiled linens, bag two, items to be disinfected and trash. So then your paper towel will just go into the trash. If you feel the need, disinfect your hands again. You can never disinfect too much. And then continue to get the rest of your setup. So the rest of your setup for client one, of course, is your mannequin. Put her on your stand. You'll get your bag out that's got client one and client two. You'll just use client one for now. Put a paper towel down as your setup. In your bag, you'll have a cloth towel to protect the nape, the neck of your guest against the cape, a brush, Clips, okay this is the thermal section, they give you 10 minutes to do the thermal. The very first thing you want to do is you want to disinfect your hands. Anytime before doing a specific section of the test, disinfect your hands first, just for caution. And then you want to get a paper towel. The paper towel is to test your iron. Make sure you're not going to burn somebody. Once you've tested your iron, you don't have to, but I like to section mine off just to keep me on task. Your sections, there's two, you have to do two thermals on the top and two on the side. Your sections cannot be any longer width than your iron or this way bigger than your iron. So lengthwise, no wider than the barrel of your iron. Density wise, no wider than your iron. I do recommend pre-setting your mannequin with rollers before going into the testing site that night before because you will be using a cold iron for this part. Make sure you tap at the base, tap, 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 and tap throughout. The comb needs to go under the iron to protect your guest scalp. Tap to get it out and use your comb to slide it off your rod. You don't have to pin them up, it'll just fall and they want to see that it's curled from scalp to the ends. That's what they're looking for. You'll do two across the top and two on the side. It doesn't matter the direction, they can be vertical or horizontal, either one.
Okay, so what you want to do is make sure that you have it sectioned off in four quadrants. They don't have to be perfect quadrants because you are on a time restraint. Again, you have to do the entire haircut, have it sectioned off, wet down, all in 30 minutes. So when you're doing the razor section, if you just glide across the top of this segment, you're just removing bulk. And if you do that through the entire haircut after you've done creating your layers, that will count as your razor portion. Now we're setting up for client two. So for client two, you need to have gloves, cotton, perm papers, barrier cream, color, lightener, relaxer. Um, I do recommend these bowls be in four ounces at least so that you can fit your color brush into them. You'll need combs, a foiling comb and a plastic tail comb and a brush, plenty of clips, plenty of foil, and enough perm rods to perm from the crown of the head to the nape. Your water bottle needs to be labeled water. Your waving lotion needs to be labeled waving lotion. You'll need two towels and a chemical cape. The chemical cape has to be specifically for chemical. Okay, now we're gonna do the draping for your chemical services. You need two towels for this section. You'll put the hair up, you'll disinfect your hands first. Put the hair out of your way. Put the towel over the head first. Fold your next towel in half. This is also going to help hold that top towel. And wrap it as tight as possible around your client or your mannequin. I do recommend pulling this all the way up till it touches the chin so that you know you've got complete coverage. Remember a fourth of an inch needs to be coming up, up over the top. and snap it as tight as possible. So we don't want this moving up and down on you throughout the service. Perfect, that's how your chemical draping should look. Okay, for the chemical waving section, they will be grading you on your chemical waving supplies being labeled in English. Implements and supplies are visibly clean. Subsections the hair for chemical waving, wraps the hair at least one to one and a half times around your rod and the correct rod placement throughout the entire section. You don't have to section off into five quadrants. You only have to section that center portion off from the crown to the nape and show that you've sectioned it off the same size as the rod Okay, so when you're done wrapping, this is how your rod should look. Nicely placed, the top one's band is touching the bottom band. Um, all the hair is evenly distrib distributed across the rod. Now the proctor will tell you to please demonstrate saturation. So the very first thing that you're going to do is disinfect your hands once again. Disinfect your hands. Put your gloves on, open 
Open your barrier cream container. Get your cotton swab or Q-tip out. You're reaching into a plastic bag, of course, disinfect your hands again. And she actually has a whole bag full of cotton swabs and that's great. You cannot double dip when you're dipping into your barrier cream. You dip once, use the other side, dip again. You should also have a cotton for the neck to protect the neck against the solution. So dip your Q-tip into your barrier cream. Put it just at the neck because that's all we're, that's the only place that we're perming. This will also help the cotton stay on as well. And then throw it into the trash. Perfect. Now put your cotton on underneath the neck, the last roller. and demonstrate your saturation. When you demonstrate your saturation, your container should be labeled waving lotion. You'll do one on the top, one on the middle, and one on the bottom in an S pattern. Top, middle, bottom, top, middle, bottom. Perfect. The proctor will then come back and ask you to demonstrate a test curl. You uncurl one rod one and a half times. You hold your fingers together and push the rod back to the scalp. That creates an S pattern, and if your rollers have been on there for at least 20 minutes, you're going to have an S pattern form. Perfect. The proctor will then come back and ask you to remove one rod from the hair. Follow complete instructions and only remove one rod. They are checking for fish hooks, and they are checking to make sure that you've completely covered the ends of the hair with your perm paper. Beautiful. And then now you wait until they tell you to remove the rest of the rods. Make sure that when you remove the rod, you put the rod in items to be disinfected and the paper in the trash. Now the proctor will ask you to remove the remaining rods from the head. While you're removing the rods, remember your rods go in the to be disinfected and your papers go in the trash. They will be grading you at this process. Mm -hmm. Once you removed all the rods, they will tell you to remove all rods and then create five sections from the remaining chemicals for the remaining chemical services. You'll be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You have 5 minutes to complete this section. Okay, so now you've got the clips in your hair from the perm still, so we'll remove those, set them on your station. Remember this is still the same client, but we still need to disinfect our hands even though we've still got the same gloves on. So just set the clips down on your SMA setup. And then part off in your five sections for the chemical, the rest of the chemical service. This is where the brush comes in handy. They are aware that the hair is going to be slightly damp because you did just do the perming section and they are okay with that. Don't feel like you have to bring in two doll heads.
Okay, so you should have five sections. You'll have the mohawk section, which is going to have foils in it, and then you're going to have four other sections. So you would section this off just like if you were doing a single process color or a basic all over color. All right, on this section, it's the predisposition and strand test. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open an alcohol swab or you're going to use your hand sanitizer and a paper behind the ear. So you're just cleaning behind the ear. And then you're gonna open your color container and your color relaxer and lightener should be colored with food coloring so that there's three different colors. You'll dip your Q-tip in your color container. You'll wipe it behind the ear. And then you'll throw away your Q-tip in the trash. Then you'll come back and you'll clean it with the paper towel and wipe it off. This shows whether or not there was irritation. And you'll throw that towel in the trash. Perfect. Now we're going to perform the strand test. On the strand test, you just take a strand of hair, apply lightener on it in foil, one strand. You're testing the hair to see if it can withstand the services that you are getting ready to do. So the lightener only needs to be applied at least to the mid shaft down. It doesn't have to go up all the way to the scalp. Then you fold your foil up, just like with, you would do with any other foil. And leave it lay. That's it. Alright, now we're going to go into the foil section. You will perform highlighting with foil virgin application. You will place four foils on the top of the head from the front of the hairline to the apex. You will apply simulated highlighting product from upper edge of the foils to the hair ends. You will be expected to foil all client, follow all client protection, safety, and infection control. So what they're expecting to see is that you leave a fourth of an inch so that if your lightener expands and swells, it's not going to create a holiday. In the hairline section, whenever we teach you to foil in the hairline. You weave it out. So in this section, weave it out. But they do want to see a foil right here. So weave this section, take your fourth of an inch section, slice, slice off the top so that it's an eighth, and then do your foil. And then through the rest of it, you can place four foils throughout the head as long as you come here and stop at the apex. Right, it's just different wordings, okay. So you're gonna slice off the top because you need to have a see-through eighth of an inch section whenever you foil, otherwise your hair won't be completely saturated, just like we teach you. And now you'll weave the bottom section because they want to see the hair around the hairline in foils.
The reason we're not using berry cream on this section is because it's all in foils, so we're not touching any color on the skin. I do recommend locking all of your foils in so that none of them are slipping throughout your test. So when you get done, you should have a foil ending at the apex, hair left out in between, and four other foils. One, two, three, four. You cut this finger, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to wrap it in glove? Yeah. And then disinfect that hand first. need a plastic baggie. And you just want to open up the band-aid also while we're at it? Mm -mm. Nope, you don't need to. Go ahead and clean it off. And then you can reach in and open your band-aid. Just make sure you're not using that index finger. So you're pretending this whole time that you've cut this finger. So mm -hmm. it needs to look like you've cut it by holding it up. The glove goes back on your hand. Can you like sanitize the first? Glove. Is that okay? Yeah, but um, you have to sanitize again after mm -hmm. you throw everything in the trash. Mm -hmm. 